Hey everybody, welcome back to the Kit Plane Enthusiast YouTube channel. My name is Mark Pensenstadler. Behind me is the Blue Angels Cruiser, which is almost ready to fly. But before we even get started, I want to say thank you to our over 10,000 subscribers on this channel now. I'm blown away that we have 10,000 subscribers. Thank you very much to all of you. Now what we're going to talk about in this video is, I think I mentioned on a previous video that this number two cylinder is hitting the inside of the cowling, which is not good. You can see here that it's already starting to rub away a little bit of the coating on the valve cover, so something needed to be done about that. What I chose to do is cut that part of the cowl away and fiberglass in a blister to give that cylinder room inside the cowling. This video is on how I did that. In order to locate where I needed to cut, from the inside, I drilled a few holes around the perimeter of a teardrop-shaped blister. I put the cowl back on to make sure that it cleared the cylinder, which it does, and you can see it how much it hit here. It's sticking out just a little bit. So I don't need to make too big of a blister, but this hole does work. Just when I started to do this, I realized at the very back, I don't want it to come to a point because then the fiberglass will crack. I wanted a nice, round, smooth transition. So I used this unibit just to drill a hole in there and then I could continue cutting it out. So after I got a rough cut with the disc, I put a sanding drum on the Dremel, and now I'll kind of finish shaping it and contouring it so you get a nice, nice even teardrop shape opening. To finish up the back corner here, I put a smaller drum on the Dremel just to get a smaller radius in the back. And here's what it looks like when it's done and ready for the foam. Well, my plan now is to carve this out. Obviously, I put this in here and trace the, the hole size. I'm gonna to try to carve this out so it fits through there and I'm gonna sand this part into a dome and then fiberglass over it. I've never really done that before so we'll see how this comes out. I've added in some putty and it's called icing. You can buy this on Amazon. But I added that around the perimeter just to give the fiberglass a smooth transition between the little bubble and the rest of the cowl. I like to use this sandable primer just to spray it over, give it an even color. It really lets you be able to see 
how nice it looks or how nice it doesn't look. I covered it with electrical tape because the fiberglass won't stick to electri electrical tape. Uh, and then I also put some Vaseline over the tape just to help the fiberglass not stick to it. So here is three layers of wet fiberglass. I put it on this sheet of plastic and then I, I soak the fiberglass with resin. Then I cut the plastic and bring it over and put it on. So this is three layers together. I just wanted it three layers thick. And once you peel off the plastic, then you just kind of use a paintbrush to form it into the, the corners and how you want it. This resin soaked fiberglass is nice to work with because as you can see, it will conform to complex curves. After the fiberglass is to my liking, I put on peel ply, which is simply just aircraft fabric. Because you can see on the fiberglass how rough it is here. And when you put the peel ply on, it really smooths it out to give it a finer finish like you see on here on the peel ply. Now the problem with the peel ply is that it doesn't bend and conform like the fiberglass. So you have to put it on in a couple pieces and you saw I just cut a slit in it to get it to go over the little bump. So it's not as nice and fun to put on as fiberglass but it does make finishing the final fairing a lot easier because you're starting with a much smoother surface. Now the idea with the peel ply is you want to let the fiberglass resin from the fiberglass soak up into the peel ply. And that's why you just keep going over it with a, a paintbrush. Sometimes you do have to add a little bit of resin to the brush, but you'll see the more you work with it, the more that fabric or the peel ply will soak up the resin that's already on or in the fiberglass cloth. It takes a little while working with it, but you can see I did add a little bit of resin, but not much. Most of the resin you see coming up through that peel ply is the resin that soaked up from the fiberglass cloth. Well, after letting it dry for the night, it's time to remove the peel ply and it comes off fairly easy. You could just peel it off like this. To remove the fairing, I just use a hotel key card, kind of get it under the corner and you just slide it around and you can see because there's Vaseline on that electrical tape and because it doesn't really stick to the tape anyway, it just kind of pops off pretty easily. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of rough cutting around the perimeter here, just get kind of cutting off the rough edges until I really see what size I want to actually trim the fairing before I glue it in. Now there's two ways to do this. I can glue this to the outside 
obviously after I trim the fairing down a little bit more. Or I could glue it to the inside. And I think I like gluing it to the inside better because it, filling it just around the perimeter here would be a lot easier to finish, the, to finish it up. Now with the bottom cow on the airplane, I first want to see if this works, mounting it or gluing it on the inside. The problem is, I don't know how, how much this comes in with the top cow on to see if it's going to hit. So I'm going to have to put the top cow on the airplane just so I can make sure this is in the position that it's going to be in. And if it doesn't touch, then I will epoxy this to the inside or not epoxy, but use fiberglass resin to glue that on the inside. And again, on the outside here, all I have to do is put a little bit of putty around the, the edge there to, to kind of blend it in. And that's it. Well, it looks like it's not hitting because I can press it in, so I think this will work. Well, what you're looking at here is the fairing glued to the inside, and then I put a little bit of filler around the perimeter, sanded it, and I shot it with a quick coat of the sandable gray primer, just to see what it was looking like. When I glued it in, I held it in into four corners with four flush-mounted rivets. But these two, where you see the holes, the rivets were sticking up a little bit far. I didn't countersink them quite far enough. So I tried to grind them down and that wasn't working. So then I tried to drill them out. And in the big hole, my drill wound up actually going right through the whole fiberglass. So I drilled out these two rivets, but I really wasn't happy with the fairing. The problem is, especially with gluing it to the inside of the cowl, is it really closed up the space between the, the little blister and the, the cylinder. It cleared it still, but it was actually just too close for comfort. I'd rather have a little bit more space. I really wasn't too happy with how this blister was looking. So at that point, I decided to cut it out and start all over again. All right, now I'm liking this a lot better. I've got a bigger blister, it gives the cylinder more room, and I've got a new piece of foam that I've already kind of cut out and carved the same way I showed you in the beginning of the video. I'm just kind of fine tuning it here with a razor blade, and then uh, I'll hit it with some sandpaper and smooth this one out. Here's what it looks like with the new piece of foam carved, and you'll notice the fiberglass around the perimeter. I've beveled that and that is to give the filler, uh, or the peanut butter filler, a place to stick to and fill in. This is the new blister covered with electrical tape, and I've mixed some peanut butter to put it around the perimeter. This one, this one is working out a lot better than the first one. I think I learned how to do it on the first one, and now this second one's gonna be a lot nicer. Well, it's been about two hours, so I'm just spreading another coat of resin to freshen this up around the perimeter, everywhere the fiberglass will go. And I'm, this time I'm laying it up dry, so I'm going to put on three layers of fiberglass. This is the first layer. And each layer will get, kind of get smaller and smaller, not by much, but it just kind of helps blend in the very bottom. It'll be a little less filling that I'll have to do. So I just press it on and then the idea here is to not add a whole lot of resin, but just let the resin soak up from what's from what I just wiped on the cowl. I do have to trim it a little bit. It's hard to get the exact size that you need when you're just 
putting it on dry. So you'll notice the difference this time here is I'm actually just fiberglassing it to the cowl itself on the outside instead of making a separate fairing that will pop off and then get glued on. This is just getting fiberglassed right to the cowl uh, so it won't come off. And what I'll do once everything's done and dry is I'll just dig out the pink foam from the inside and then all around the perimeter on the outside of the cowl where the fiberglass is, I'll have to put a little bit of that body filler or icing that I showed you previously and that'll all get sanded and smooth to blend it all in and hopefully you'll never know that it wasn't molded into the cowl. With the three layers of fiberglass on, now it's time to put on the peel ply, which again is just aircraft fabric. This is gonna make the outside a lot smoother than just the raw fiberglass, which helps for finishing the, the final blister once it's done. I really like this second blister I made a lot better than the first. What you're seeing here is a mixture of the epoxy resin and it has a different hardener in it and that's why it's kind of white in color but it's very very easy to sand so i put a lot of this on all around the perimeter and i can shape this to blend it into the rest of the cow As I'm doing this, you'll notice that I have the, the sandpaper wrapped around a piece of foam. That's to get a nice consistent curve around the perimeter. If I just used my fingers to sand this, I think I'd have a pretty uneven blend into the cowl. So again, the foam just gives it a nice uniform curve. Now this is the final blister. I sprayed a little bit of the gray primer over it just to get an idea of how it's looking. Now this is not complete yet. I do need to touch it up with a little bit finer grit sandpaper and maybe add more, a little bit more filler just to perfect a few areas. But all in all, I'm really happy with it. Well, hopefully that showed you a little bit of what's involved in making a fiberglass part like that. Thank you for watching. If you guys will do me a huge favor, please just hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel. All of that really helps the channel to grow and it helps me to continue to bring you content. See you later guys. Look forward to the next video. I think in the next video, the cow will be painted, installed on the airplane, and we'll have a finished airplane to look at. Ooh.